Okay. All right. So, uh, welcome, welcome. This is <laughs> just start like nothing happened That's just before. Like uh, this is math 1000 pre-calculus, and I will be your instructor, as you can see there. Uh, so Has anyone here ever taken pre-calc before? Okay. Let's see. So hopefully uh, it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, so my name is Javon. So if you can call me Javon, that's fine. And I will be your instructor for this course. Now for today it's the first class, so what I plan on doing the majority uh, of the class is just going to be me reading through the syllabus with you. Uh, I'm going to go through it very briefly, very quickly, and you should probably uh, read it on your own in more detail um, when you do have time. But let's actually just kind of get an idea of how this class is going to be run. Uh, Start with the first page. There's my name, Javon. Uh, that's my email, jsmith06 at fordham.edu. I know what you're thinking. Yes, I am the 306th J. Smith. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is, these are my office hours. <laughs> these are my office hours, Wednesdays and Fridays, 12 to 3 p.m. Or by appointment, you can shoot me an email to, if you want to see me outside of those hours. And the office location is JMH. Um, that's a building in there where the math department is, so you should know uh, how to get to that pretty soon. Uh, the tutoring center is also going, to be, also going to be located in the same building, so you should get to know that building. Uh, this is the website I will be sending you there. Um, because I will put a special page on that website for this class. It's not up yet because I just want to make sure all the rosters and everything are finalized first. Um, but I will soon be sending you to that website. I will be posting a lot of stuff there uh, for the class. So things like an electronic version of the syllabus where a lot of these things are actually clickable. Uh, I will post like reviews for tests, uh, quizzes and the answers, tests and their answers. Uh, any advice, any handouts or documents that I give you guys, I'll be posting there. So you can always find that. The text that we will be using is Pre-Calculus 7th edition. And uh, you don't need to have the physical textbook, and, but you can get it pretty cheaply, the electronic version. Um, and I think I put a link to that there. I don't think I did the Amazon thing, but I, I think I put a link where you can actually pick up the text there. That's the Foreign Math Department website. Okay. Um, Short course description of the kinds of things we're going to be talking about. Uh, calculators are not allowed in this class, so we're going to be doing everything by hand. So every time I give you a problem, it will be something you can work out by hand. The numbers aren't going to be too crazy. Um, this typical grading chart, that's how your grades are going to be assigned. And here's how the grade breakdown is going to happen. So quizzes, I'm going to give you a quiz every other week. And it, the quizzes combined will be 10% of your grade. Homework is also 10%. That's going to be online through uh, the web work system. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Participation. So I will take attendance every class. And if you show up early all the time, you get 5% just for showing up. So you should be doing it anyway. Um, two tests will be given. They're not cumulative. Uh, combined, they make up 40%. And there will be a final exam worth 35%. Okay? The final exam is cumulative. I'll talk a little bit more about this as we move on. Moving on to the next page. Uh, I have to have a very good reason to get a makeup, but typically I won't give makeups for quizzes or homeworks. So that's like if you miss one of the exams. And that's the statement about attendance. Show up and be early. If not, you can know, let me know that you'll be missing and I'll provide the reason. Uh, be aware that I will try to contact you by your college email address. So you should always pay attention to that. As well as I highly encourage feedback. So this isn't going to be a one-way conversation all the time. A lot of times while I'm teaching, I'll be asking for input from the class. So I really want to have a, a conversation. And so I highly recommend that you give me feedback on how the class is run, maybe something that you want to see more, etc. Uh, just as long as it's constructive. So don't just be like, your teaching sucks. Be like, your teaching sucks because. <laughs> right? And then uh, here is the statement about homework. So to access the homework, Here's the link you will go to, and again, that's not set up because, again, I want to finalize the roster. So none of the websites here are set up just yet, but as soon as they are, I will let you know. 
and these are the login instructions. As I said here, quizzes are given in the beginning of class uh, bi-weekly, so the start of the class will be the quiz on days that I am giving the quiz, and tests will also be during the regular class period. Um, I mentioned the locations of the test later on, so let's actually move on. Final is cumulative, given during the finals week, and I believe you already know the date for that. Uh, quickly, the expectations. These you should read uh, very carefully and make sure you understand the kind of things I expect from you. Um, first of all, excellent work ethic. You're going to have to work hard. I know a lot of you said you've actually taken pre-calculus before, but in my experience, from like this happens in calculus one all the time. Students tell me they do calc one before and they still do poorly in the class. And it's kind of because they might think, oh, I took this already, so I don't really have to study so hard. No, you have to study just as hard as everyone else. So I do expect you to have a very strong work ethic. Uh, that's what's going to take you through more than your IQ, actually. It's more about hard work, focused hard work, and just perseverance. Um, I'm going to assume you know you're pretty good at algebra, uh, so I'm not really going to. There are many things that I will cover that you've already done in algebra, um, but a lot of the times I'll just skim over them. Um, but I do expect you to have a pretty good algebra background, so you should be able to simplify things and solve equations and sketch graphs uh, very quickly and naively. And of course, be responsible. But again, I do that more quickly. Now, blasphemy is the beginning of the next page. I don't know if you guys know what that word means. I know it's a bit inflammatory, but that's kind of on purpose. I do want to get your attention with that word. <laughs> um, so it does have a religious context. It's like one of those unforgivable sins. That's kind of what the word means. Uh, but yes, for this class, there are certain things that I will consider unforgivable. And I want to go through them now uh, so you know what they look like. So you can't say, no, I couldn't do that. So pay attention. This part is very important. So there are some things that under no circumstance should you do in this class, no matter what. Even if someone's holding a gun to your head, I don't care. Do not do these things here in this list. Okay, so the first thing you want to avoid at all costs will be do not. Uh, let's start with this. Cancel across sums. Okay. So that's the first thing. You do not do that. Okay. What do I mean by that? So let's say you're working on a problem, da, 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 da. you eventually get to a point where you're like, okay, it's 2x plus 1 all over 2. And you go, <coughs> I can cancel the 2s. You no, know, you cannot cancel the 2s. This is called canceling across sums. So the pro reason why canceling the 2 is illegal is because there's a plus sign here separating two terms. There are two terms in the numerator and one term in the denominator. You can't just affect this one without affecting that one. And so that is highly illegal. It also works with a minus, by the way. So sums is the general word. It can mean a plus or a minus. Um, so you cannot cancel when things are being separated by pluses or minuses. That is very illegal. Um, you can cancel only across multiplication. So if you have 2 times x plus 1 all over 2, you could cancel that because you're canceling across a multiplication. So this. Good. <laughs> that, that, I, I bought all this color chalk. I'm going to use it. <laughs> okay. So canceling across sums very illegal. Do not do it. Um, another thing you do not want to do. Do not distribute. And this is a, a big one. Powers across sums. That's a big no-no. Let me just double check that this is actually being caught. <laughs> so, here's an example. Um, let's say you have x plus 2 squared, right? And some people are going to look at that and they're going to do like, oh, well, just, you know, it's not x squared plus 4. That is highly illegal and it is incorrect, very incorrect. What is actually the correct answer? What is x plus 2 all squared? Plus what? x squared plus 4x plus 4. 
that is what's the correct answer. You were actually missing a term if you just distribute the power across the sum. Now, there are a couple ways that you could see that. Um, one is you could actually remember what x plus 2 squared means. It just means x plus 2 times x plus 2. And then you expand the brackets by applying the distributive law. If you take the x and multiply out, take the 2 and multiply out and add everyone at the common terms together. And you will eventually get x squared plus 4x plus 2. Uh, another way is to also remember a formula, which again, this is something I expect you to remember from algebra, that a plus b all squared is a squared plus 2 and a plus b squared. Okay. And a minus b all squared. Uh, you just change the middle sign. Okay. So you can apply that in this situation. Your x is the a, your b is the 2, and you'll get 4x from that. Okay. Now it's, yeah. We're allowed to do the top one, right? The, like the long hand ring? Yes, it's not illegal, it's not wrong. I would prefer you do it this way, though. Um, but I, I won't mark it wrong if you do it that way. Um, and that's just because for your future, right? Eventually, um, you want to be able to do math a lot easier, a lot quicker, a lot more efficiently, because eventually um, things will get so complicated that if it's, you write things down cumber more cumbersome, it makes your life harder. Um, so pretty much when you see this, you should kind of see this formula in your head and directly write that down. Um, and at least start practice doing that. Because um, this, it takes extra time. Uh, you don't really want to waste time, even though it is correct. I'd rather you actually know formulas. Um, what about this formula while we're here? What is that? C squared. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? A plus B times A minus B. A plus B times A minus B. Right, this is called the difference of squares formula. Um, you can't believe, yesterday I was doing this with another class. It was actually a Cal 1 class, believe it or not. And uh, I mentioned this, and then I asked them, what's this? And guess what they told me? Oh, uh, is it A minus B squared? No, it's literally <laughs> the mistake I just pointed out that you shouldn't make. Okay. <laughs> right, so that's the difference of squares. Does anyone know this one? Difference of cubes. A squared plus uh, B squared times A plus minus B. No. That one is. It turns out that the, the, something like this only works for the square. If the number gets higher, the the multiplication gets longer. It, it doesn't. It's not. It's not something that always works no matter what the power you put. So be very careful. Um, and if I went to the fourth power, you'll get something even longer. Uh, and this one. So that is the difference of cubes and sum of cubes. Does anyone know about the sum of a square? How would you factor the sum of a square? Well, uh, it turns out that you can't really do it over the real numbers anyway, um, but it will be something like Now, has anyone seen this symbol before? I, what it means? That's complex numbers. Um, good thing here is we won't have to worry about this class. Uh, won't worry about complex numbers here. So if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it too much. Um, so as far as you're concerned, if you see something like a squared plus b squared, just don't do anything. Leave it as is. You see a squared plus b squared um, about complex numbers. Right, so don't distribute powers across sums. Here's a very common one. Sometimes students, this rule, even students who wouldn't make mistakes like I mentioned before, they'll make mistakes when they see something that looks scarier, like a radical. So they see that. Well, see, the radical, don't want the radical, let me get rid of the 
right one. They're like, oh, well, you can just square it this and square it this. And it's that, right? It is not, right? That is the same kind of mistake. You just distribute a power across the sum. Because we should know from algebra that radicals are actually powers, right? You can actually write a radical as a power. If I were to write that as a power, what would it be? It means one half. So when you do this, what you're doing is you're taking the half, put it here, and putting it here, which is wrong, right? That does not equal that, right? So that's another place, a common mistake that I would see there. Um, so what I mentioned applies to powers, will apply to radicals um, in general, and so you should. So you should be careful of that. You cannot do that. And this one, in some sense, is even worse than the last one. Because to actually write this out in expanded form, you would need an infinite number of terms. So you're missing a lot of stuff here. Um, and when you get to calc 2, you'll see how to actually expand that. It's not something you would know at this point. Yeah. So does that mean that in regards to this class, we're able to write numbers well? Yeah. So I'm not going to deal with any complex numbers. So in general, if you have something like um, x squared equals minus 1, in this class, you'll say no solution. I'm not going to worry about compass units. So be careful of that. Do not distribute powers across sums. Another thing uh, that comes up, and I don't know, maybe we can talk about this at some point, but don't divide by zero. I see it happening sometimes. Not zero by two. Don't divide by zero. Right? So if you see two over zero, a lot of people think, is that infinity? No, it's not infinity. It is, it is meaningless. <laughs> right? So chances are if you end up with a division by zero, you made a mistake, or the thing you're trying to solve actually has no solution. So be very careful of that. Um, when you get to calculus, you will be doing things that seems like you're dividing by zero, but you're not actually. And when you get to calculus, I'll have you worry about it. But for now, never divide by zero. It, it's not zero, it's not infinity, it's not anything. If you write this as an answer and you box that, or you write this equals zero and you box that, I'm just going to... Um, so, those are illegal. How illegal? Here's how illegal those things are. If I see you do one of the things I just mentioned in a problem, I will give you zero for the problem. I do not care what you wrote otherwise. There'll be no partial credit. I just give you a zero and I move on in my life. I'm not going to read anything else you say because you know, if you think you can divide by zero, you probably can't trust much. Okay? So, <laughs> it's very serious. I'm, I'm joking, but I, I'm, I'm serious. Avoid these things. And it turns out that there's a lesson here. One, one way in which a lot of times you can end up in the right situation, in the right position, and doing the right thing is to know what not to do. A lot of times when you avoid doing the wrong thing, you kind of fall into the right thing automatically. And so you should just be, just be aware of a lot of times you need to know what things you cannot do. And then it'll force you to think of, of something else because you know, oh, I can't do that. Uh, the fourth one, this one is not really a blasphemy. It's more of an admonition and I uh, probably won't give you an outright zero, but I'll probably deduct points a lot if you Neglect to do this, and this one is use parentheses appropriately. So chances are, uh, if you're subtracting something, it should be in a parentheses because the negative sign has to distribute it, etc. Um, one thing is that students sometimes will know that they should write parentheses, but they decide not to write for whatever reason because they're like, yeah, I know it should be there, but they decide to not write it down. And what happens is that like five steps later in that problem, when they're anxious and I'm like, five minutes left, and they freak out, they forget all the imaginary parentheses they had in the problem way before that, and they end up getting something wrong when, in general, they were on the right track, right? So that's another one of those things to avoid doing. Don't be sloppy. Kind of be detail-oriented and write everything down. Pay attention to notation and write down the proper notation for everything. And that will actually spare you a lot of trouble. In particular, I see this being abused with parentheses all the time. Um, let's actually throw some of this into an example.
So if you misuse parentheses, while I won't give you just a zero and move on, I'll probably deduct a lot of points. So you'll probably lose half credit automatically or something like that. Um, let's uh, run through an example here. Suppose I told you that f of x is x minus x squared, and I ask you to compute that expression. Does anyone know what this expression is called? Has anyone seen it before? It's familiar. It's familiar, right? It's called the difference quotient. It's super important. In Calc 1 is where you learn why it's important. Um, but it's a very common thing that uh, someone would ask you to actually compute in an algebra or a calculus class. Um, yeah, let's actually do that for this one. Okay, go. Someone come with it. What did I write down? Just call it out. Someone go. Attempt, but incorrect. <laughs> now, why is it incorrect? What are what are the issues here? Someone point them out. Yeah. Is it because the second f of x is in the negative? Therefore, the on the like answer portion, the first f uh, f of x minus x squared. Uh, it should be like uh, in the negatives as well. I don't think there's something before that, yeah? Because don't you just, since it's a different quotient, don't you substitute whatever f of x is like the actual function? Yeah. So instead of f x minus x, it's just uh, negative. Uh, you put a parenthesis around x minus x squared. Right, so that was the first thing. The f's shouldn't be there in the first place. So that's wrong. You're, you're actually I want to actually compute. So f of x is this. Like, so when, I, when you want to replace f of x, it's replaced by that. You, you take the f away, right? F, of, f is just the name of this statement. Okay. So anything else? Yeah. Are you supposed to put a parenthesis after the first x minus x squared and then plus h? You mean like here? Yeah. No. no. Yeah? Uh, we should substitute x plus h wherever x is. So should it be x plus h minus parentheses x plus h squared? Yes. So remember how functions work. This is a notation that means something very specific. Usually when you see a function notation, how you kind of want to think of it is as the guy here is just a placeholder. So this is really f of something equals that minus something squared. And just think of the x as a placeholder, right? Whatever I put here, I would put here and here, right? Uh, and so if someone were to ask you, um, for this function, if f of x is equal to x minus x squared, and they ask you, what is f of 1? How would you actually compute that? Well, you plug in 1 for x, right? And if someone were to ask you, what is f of 2? You would plug in 2 for x. It's no different if someone asks you, what is f of x plus h? you plug in x plus h for x, right? Whatever I put in parentheses over here shows up in these two positions, right? So that's what this kind of notation means. Doesn't matter what's there, I could ask you what is f of smiley face, and you're gonna put smiley face minus smiley face squared. And for, not completely necessary here for brownie points, put that in parentheses. A subtraction. Okay. So that's how this notation works. So when I see f of x plus h, what does that mean? Look at the original formula. Ever I see x, replace it with. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace x. Ever I see x with 
parentheses x plus h. So the first, this starts out by looking like x plus h minus x plus h squared minus the f of x which is x minus x squared all over h. So is that fine? No, it's not fine. What's wrong? Parentheses. Because that here is a negative x squared, but ultimately it should be a positive x squared. And we're going to see why that should be in a little bit. So be very careful. That's a very common place to forget parentheses when I ask problems like this. It happens all the time. So that's actually the first step. Now, usually they would say compute and simplify this guy. So how do you go about simplifying this? What would this become? Yeah, again, very common for students to just put x squared plus h squared, that would be wrong. You need the formula here. And, of course, you still need the parentheses because that negative sign is going to change all the signs in the middle. Okay, then what? Let's just expand these parentheses here. Okay, so that's part of what the second step would look like. And then maybe let's just... Uh, So we get here, and ah, I see what we can do now. We can cancel these h's, right? No. no. You do that, you get a zero. You cannot cancel the h. Knowing that you can't cancel the h, what is there to do? What, what, what are you doing? Combine like terms, right? So you know you're not going to start canceling stuff, so you look, what else can I do? Well, the top seems pretty complicated. Let's try to clean it up. I have x minus x. I have minus x squared plus x squared. Now if I forgot the parentheses here, that would have been a problem, but we're going to see soon. It's not going to be a problem, so we have that. And nothing else, right? So what I have now is h minus 2xh minus h squared all over h. Ah, I can cancel the h's now, right? No, you cannot do that. It's so funny, a lot of times students are doing so well and they reach the last step and they do that. Pay attention, you have to keep focused. Okay, so I can cancel the H, what can I do? You can factor H, you would know that H is a common term. Right? So knowing that I can cancel, factoring seems to be the only game in town here, and now the H is cancel. And so this is 1 minus 2x minus H. So that would be the correct uh, simplification of the difference quotient for this function. Okay. And it's a nice illustration of all the things I was talking about before. And I've seen students make all those mistakes more times than I can count. Um, so just be aware of them and avoid them like a pig. Um, and of course, you know, you can't let up, right? There, there were so many opportunities to miss the parentheses or to not um, cancel properly. Uh, so you always have to be vigilant and always be looking out for things like that to pop up. They pop up a lot of times in algebra and pre-calc and it messes you up in calculus too. So yeah, uh, nice one to illustrate some of the things we're talking about. And yeah, we are going to be talking about functions a little bit. So I'll, I'll revisit this idea here, how to deal with functions and what the notation means. But for now we are Okay, we're moving on. Okay, help. If you ever find yourself in need of help, do not be afraid to ask for help. It does not mean that you're stupid or you shouldn't be here or any of that. No, everyone needs help at some point. You should ask for help when you need help. Now, if you realize you need help, how are you going to know if you need help? Well, your grades, of course, right? Every time I give you a quiz, if you get back a bad score, you should say, I need help. And then you go get help. Okay. One, there's me. You can actually email me and meet me during my office hours. Uh, two, we actually offer free tutoring here in, again, JMH building, room 410. 
Um, I don't believe it's currently operational because they like to have a faculty member for every hour that it's open, and so they have to get everyone scheduled and everything like that. So that will probably be up in a week or, or two. Um, a bunch of online resources that I even I find useful almost every day. Wolfram Alpha, Symbol Lab, uh, all that stuff. If you want to graph things, graph.tk if you want to check your graphing skills on something, or desmos.com, right? Google search can do wonders. Uh, lastly, your classmates are actually a fantastic resource. Um, seems like several of you are already friends. Make sure you make friends with someone if you don't know anyone um, to actually um, you know, form study groups or uh, catch up, help you catch up if you miss something. And as far as studying goes, I'll talk about that uh, in a bit. Again, we do have a disability services center here, so if you have some sort of disability that you think will affect your performance in the class, you should see these people right away uh, because a lot of things have to happen before we can give you accommodations. Usual class rules, no cell phones, no eating, whatever. Um, academic integrity, don't cheat very bad. If I catch you, it's going to be very bad. Uh, here are a few important dates uh, that I took out of the academic calendar. If you want to see the full calendar, you can go to that link. Um, yeah, so right here I tell you about all the school closings and all the days where Fordham feels like it should be another day. So on Wednesday, September 4th, Fordham's like, feels like a Monday to me, so they make that a Monday. Um, so you should be careful, they might switch your schedule around on certain days. Yeah. So I have a question about that. On Wednesday they follow Monday's schedule, but on Thursday it's back to being a Thursday. Yes. Yeah, so the days only switch when I mention them. I think that that's probably the only one. So usually what happens is because there's a holiday that they try to make up the time uh, by changing the schedule around. Okay, final exams are going to be during that week and it tells you when it's closed and all that stuff. Okay, cool. I have another question. Yes. What are reading days? Oh, reading days is like study days. So it's like days when the, so the last day of class is going to be December 6th. And December 9th and 10th, these are days where the college is open, but no classes are in session. It's just like you can just come with your friends and study. And use so the the classrooms will be free. You don't have to come. You can be at home and study. Yeah. Um, but you should be in during finals week. Okay. Here are the topics that we'll be covering in the course, as well as here are some suggested prompts for practice. So again, your homework is online. I'm, I won't be collecting these. But again, if you notice you need help, if you're not doing so well, you might want to practice some extra problems, and these are these are these are a good place to start. Um, so this is pretty much the schedule for the whole course. Again, a lot of these you would have seen in algebra class before, and so I might just rush through them if that's the case, or I might actually spend some time on it if I realize that it is a problem that I see people continually having down the road. And another thing you can see from this is the location of your test. So the first test um, you will see occurs on October 17th, okay? And that will cover pretty much whatever I've covered up to that point. So that's definitely the date, um, even though the sets of topics are attended. And test two is on December 5th, and it will cover everything we've covered that wasn't on test one. So the tests aren't cumulative unless um, incidental. Then there's your final exam, and as far as I know at this point, that's December 16th at 9.30. Um, that's actually a hyperlink. If you click on that, it will take you to the final exam schedule, which sometimes they actually change in October, November, late October, early November. So if this actually changes, I'll let you guys know, but you can always be up to date by actually clicking on that link. And here's the questionnaire. So I'd like you guys to fill this out and look it off. And you're going to hand this in to me, you're going to keep the service. No, so the homework is online, so like I said, it's not set up yet. As soon as it's set up, I'll send out a mass email and let you guys know, hey, there's homework. And again, I encourage you to go over the syllabus and read it again very slowly, very carefully. If you have any questions, you should let me know. Any questions so far?
you don't know the answer to something, it's okay to write I don't know. But that should tell you that you should find out. So that question, what math classes do you need, for example? Like, I ask that because every semester something that happens is a student comes to me like in the middle of semester and says, oh, I realize I actually don't need this class for my major. And then they just have to drop out of the class. And like, you wasted all that time. Like, know from day one where you should be and where you should be going. So if you don't know, make sure you check that out. Talk to an advisor or something. Yeah. Um, check the college bulletin. Make sure you actually know where you should be uh, and when is yours. So if you don't know, write that, but you should find out. Is up and your homework is up, I'll send out a mass email and let you guys know about it. Um, for the next order of business, what we are going to move on to is our first quiz of the semester. Yay! <laughs> yes, I came with I came bearing gifts. So what I'd like you to do is put your stuff away. Um, leave the questionnaire out, but you can put away everything else. And when you're done, you'll hand the questionnaire and the quiz back to me. So this is a quiz on algebra, um, kind of giving you an idea of some of the things I expect you to know already. Uh, but sure, take a sheet of scrap paper. So it's, it's just like fill in the blank. No, no, just write the answers here. Do your workout on scrap paper. Um, yeah, and you'll have the rest of the period. So we actually end at 12.45. That's almost enough time. 